Okay, so we've already learned the basics of naming alkenes, but there's um, a little more we have to do to really finish this off. So I want to talk about two examples here, two different molecules. Um, this molecule on the left and on the right. So if we look at these two molecules and we try to name them, one, two, three, four, five got a bromine at 2, a methyl at 3. So the name of this compound is 2-bromo-3-methyl-pent-2-ene. If we look at the compound on the right, longest carbon chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, a bromine at 2 and a methyl at 3. This is also called 2-bromo-3-methyl-pent-2-ene. All right? But in fact, these compounds are different compounds, all right? They are technically diastereomers, all right? So when you have an alkene, what you'll notice here is that in the molecule on the left, the bromine is on the same side as the ethyl group, right? In this molecule here, the Carbon 1 is on the same side as the ethyl group, right? And then our bromine is on the same side as the methyl. We're here, the methyls are on the, two same, on the same side of the alkene, all right? So with alkenes, because there's a carbon-carbon double bond here, right, between carbon 2 and 3, there's not free rotation through this bond. So this bond cannot rotate. Because it is a pi bond, there is a large barrier to rotation. All right? So that bond is not going to freely rotate. So what that means is that these are actually two different compounds. All right? And you see by the, the way we've named these, right? we have to be able to distinguish between these two molecules. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to we're going to learn how to name these compounds. All right? So the process to do this is pretty simple, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to cut right through the alkene to establish a left and a right side. And then on each side, we're going to assign the atom or chain that has a higher priority, just like we did for R and S. So we're using atomic number. So on the left side here, we see we have a bromine connected to the sp2 carbon, and then a carbon. Bromine has a higher atomic number, so that gets a star. On the right side, right, our green carbon, that's connected to a carbon, and then also a carbon. So we have to continue out until we find a difference. This carbon is attached to three hydrogens. This carbon here is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. So we're following the same process we do with R and S. In R and S, you have to determine numbers, one, two, three, four. Here we just have to figure out what the higher priority is. And that means that this carbon here has a higher priority. So on the left side, the bromine has a higher priority. On the right side, the ethyl has a higher priority. Then what we do is we look through the bond. We look through the bond, and we determine are the groups with the higher priorities on the same side or on the opposite side, sort of like cis and trans. So these are on the same side, okay? Previously, we called that cis, but when we're, naming, when we're naming compounds, we're not going to use the term cis, right? Because that can be confusing. The bromine and the ethyl are cis, but the bromine and the methyl are trans. So what we're going to do is instead of using the term cis, we're going to use the letter Z. Z means the highest priority groups are on the same side. All right? So if we look... The bromine has a higher priority on the left. The ethyl has a higher priority on the right. They are on the same side, all right? So what that means is this compound is not just 2-bromo-3-methylpentuene. In front of it, 
in parentheses, we're going to write the letter Z, saying that we have a Z alkene. All right. Let's work through this again on the alkene on the right. So I'm going to draw a line through the alkene, okay, establishing a carbon on the left, a carbon on the right. I now compare the bromine and the carbon. Bromine has a higher atomic number, so that has a higher priority. On the right side, we've got a methyl and our ethyl. We've got a carbon and a carbon. This carbon is attached to three H's. This carbon is attached to a carbon and two H's. Therefore, the ethyl has the higher priority. Okay. So we've established our priorities now. All right. And then now what we're going to do is instead of cutting through the alkene, we're now going to look through it and we see that these are now on opposite sides of the line. Okay, so what that means is when they're on opposite side, we had kind of used the term trans, but instead of the term trans, we're going to use the letter E. So that means that this alkene, all right, is going to be E. All right. So on the left, that is our Z alkene. On the right, that is our E alkene, and that's how those are distinguished. All right. So again, I just want to remind you when we were talking about stereochemistry, when we talk about cis and trans isomers, right? Here is a cis isomer, here is the trans isomer, those are categorized as diastereomers. Okay. So these compounds here are technically diastereomers. All right. So let's look at a few more examples on how we can name molecules when they have alkenes and stereocenters. The next example I want to look at has two alkenes. Two alkenes. All right. So here we can number this left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a hex, and what do we do when we have two alkenes? We're going to add the prefix di, but because we're adding a prefix di, tri, tetra, we have to add the letter a, right? So we go from hexane to hexene if you had one alkene, but if you have more than one, it's going to be hexadiene, okay? So it's important to know if we had three, it would be tri, four would be tetra. We have to add this letter A when we have more than one alkene. All right, so we have to add that letter A when we add more than one alkene. So if you look at our, our root name here, this is a hexa 24 diene right? Because the first alkene is between carbons two and three. The second alkene it comes between carbons 2 and 4, all right? Obviously, we have a chlorine at carbon 3, right? But now, again, we have to label these as being R or S, all right? So let's go through that exercise again to label these as R or S. Alkene on the left, I'm going to cut through, okay? So this is attached to a carbon, a methyl group. What's the other, right? Carbon makes four bonds. What's the other attachment? That's a hydrogen. A carbon has a higher atomic number than H. On the right side, the sp2 carbon is connected to a chlorine and a carbon. Okay. The chlorine has a higher atomic number. That has a star there. Then I look through the double bond, and I determine that these are on the same side. So the alkene at 2 is a Z. All right, the alkene at 2 is a Z. Let's look at the other alkene between 4 and 5. Right, again, I'm going to cut through. The sp2 carbon on the left is connected to a carbon, and then what's not shown is a hydrogen. 
carbon has a higher priority. The sp2 carbon on the right is connected to a carbon. And again, another hydrogen. So again, that carbon has a higher priority. I now go through the alkene, and I see that my stars are on opposite sides, right? They're on opposite sides here. So that's trans or E. So what that means is the alkene at 4 is going to be an E. So what we do is when we have um, only, when we only have one alkene, right, we just put parentheses and just put the letter. We don't have to put the number on where it is if there's only one alkene. But if you have two alkenes, you have to put the number in front. So we have 2Z for E. And then we know the alkene at 2 is Z, and the alkene at 4 is E. And again, the alkene is between carbons 2 and 3, and between carbons 4 and 5. So this is how we name these molecules, right, when we have more than one alkene. And again, don't forget, it's a hexadiene. All right, so I want to look at a few more examples here where we have alkenes and stereocenters, okay? So here if we, if we number these, one, two, three, four, five, we obviously have a stereocenter at carbon four, okay? So you can work out the stereochemistry. Obviously, no, we know that that's going to end up being R. I'd like you to practice determining why the why the alkene at 2 is Z, right? So there's the answer there. But what we can see now is when we have one stereocenter and one alkene, again, we don't have to use numbers. We can just write parentheses R, parentheses Z, all right? If we look at our next example, here we have two stereocenters and one alkene. Okay, two stereocenters and one alkene. Okay, there is carbon two. Right, so we have a stereocenter at two, a stereocenter at five, and then an alkene at three. All right, so this is an oct three to all. So again, what do we do now? Because we have two stereocenters, we now have to number our stereocenters. All right, so at position two, that is R, so you can check that work. At five, that is stereocenter is S. So because we have more than one stereocenter, we have to put numbers on these. But because we only have one alkene, we don't have to put a number on it, all right? So if you have more than one stereocenter or more than one alkene, you have to use the numbers to go in front. Our next example, right? We look at this molecule, if we number this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we have one stereocenter at carbon two, all right? Now we have two alkenes, all right? So you can kind of work through the full name, right? This is good practice. But again, because we have one stereocenter, I don't have to use a number here. I just write the letter R. But because I have two alkenes, we have to work through to determine whether they're E or Z. You'll see that's obviously going to be E. That's obviously going to be Z. Right. So again, with our alkenes, we now have to number them. So it's R comma three E comma five Z. So you see in all of these examples, right? We're going to put the stereocenters first, and then the alkenes. All right. The last example here. Okay. Now, if you look at this molecule, and again, you can practice it. We now have two stereocenters at carbon two and at carbon seven. 
So let's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have a stereo center at seven, a stereo center at two. We also have two alkenes between three and four and five and six, all right? So now we have to number the stereo centers and we have to number the alkenes. So in this case, right, we're not going to just put all the stereo centers in front because everything's getting a number. We're just going to put these in numerical order. So you see we have a 2R, a 3E, a 5Z, and a 7R, right? So we basically just do all of that in numerical order, all right? So if you only have one stereo center or one alkene, you do the stereo centers in front, then the alkenes. If you have two or more of each, then we're just going to do this all in numerical order here. 2R, 3E, 5Z, 7R. All right. So this is just kind of putting everything we've learned together, right, in terms of nomenclature on how we can name compounds when they have stereo centers and when they have alkenes.